Okay. And one more thing is we have the we will have midterm examination break for one week, and uh, that is first week of April. I did not say we will take an examination, but we will have a break for one week. Okay. Can you understand what I mean? Okay. Actually, this is a kind of tradition of my class. Take a one week break in the middle of the semester. Everybody clear with it? Maybe some of the students who already took my uh, other class already know about I will usually take a one week break uh, in the middle of the semester. In last class, we have handled the terminology of activity. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, chemical potential, and some students have, uh, still do not have a clear, uh, it seems to me, do not have clear understanding of the chemical potential. Let's see, our initial state of the phase is located here. There is so many ways, countless ways, to express the free energy here with a linear combination of two, two numbers. For example, numbers in this axis and this axis. For example, When we would like to express the free energy in this position with linear combination of two numbers, then you can imagine there are many other ways, like this one or this one. And you can use any combination of the these numbers to express the energy of that state in linear combination of the composition. Then why we use this particular line, which is tangen tangential line of this point. That is the point to understand what is the meaning of the chemical potential. This is the only way express the free energy of species B which does not alter, does not change, does not break the equilibrium of the initial state while maintaining the free energy of original state by maintaining the free energy of original state. Just consider when we put of atom B 
with this chemical potential into very large amount of initial state. It definitely deviate this position into non-equilibrium position. The system will move to non-equilibrium position because when you put, well, even though very small amount of this specimen be with this chemical position of uh, potential, this position will deviate from the free energy curve. The only way not deviating the original position from equilibrium is putting the atom B with this chemical potential, this free energy. Actually, that is the definition of the chemical potential. Okay, so that's why we draw a tangential line and the meaning of the cross section of this tangential line with each specimen axis is that when we put this atom B with this chemical potential into very large amount of the original state, that will not change will not deviate, will not break the equilibrium condition, original equilibrium condition. Okay? The next term we consider is the activity. The definition of activity is the minus of this distance with expressed it by this formula. Minus RT log activity is the distance of this length. So what does it mean? You can understand that the activity is a measure of the free energy chain difference between pure substance and the free energy of the that substance when it is in solution. Right? As I told you, the chemical potential is apparent contribution of each element to the free energy of the solution. So this chemical potential represents what will be the contribution of the atom A in the free energy of the solution. So when we consider the difference between this mu A naught and mu A represent the difference in free energy when it is in pure substance and when it is in solution. Okay, so naturally, when this distance is quite large, if this distance is quite large, then <coughs> the specimen A will feel more stable when it is in the solution, right? Because it can reduce its free energy. Okay? The reason why we define the activity as this little bit complicated form, form is to represent the activity as a more fraction in ideal solution. Just think about it. 
when we consider the free energy of ideal solution, it is given by And by definition of the chemical potential, this should be the same as E. So, U A not go. So you can understand that when you compare this one and this one, you can easily understand in the ideal solution, the chemical uh, the activity of some certain element is equivalent to the mole fraction. And so that's why we define the activity of a long element like this. Then it is natural for you to think that the solution which is deviated from the ideal behavior, then the activity of each element will be different from the each more fraction. So to define this kind of non-ideal uh, behavior, we usually use the activity coefficient defined by A divided by its mole fraction. So when the activity coefficient is larger than 1, it means the activity is larger than its mole fraction. And when the activity is uh, the activity coefficient is smaller than 1, then the activity is less than its mole fraction. What, that, what is the physical meaning of it? What is the physical meaning of the activity coefficient larger than 1 or activity coefficient smaller, smaller less than 1? For random mixing, if the array A, uh, element A and B is mixed randomly, and if the, each element does not care about its neighbor, then the activity coefficient will be 1, right? Because that is the definition of the ideal solution. So the meaning of the activity coefficient larger than 1 is a atom prefer the same A atom is neighbor. On the contrary, the activity coefficient less than one, A atom prefer other atom, B, as its neighbor. It is more clearly seen when you think about the activity in regular solution.
So this is the free energy of solution in when you assume the regular solution. This is mechanical mixing and this is come from where? Enthalpy. This is come from the enthalpy and this is come from the entropy of mixing, right? So, this term can be written as this, right? Because Because this is one, About for the summation of the one fraction it should be one, right? So let's think similar in similar way when we uh, handle the idea solution. Just gather this term with linear combination of the x a and this term with the linear combination of the one fraction of b. Okay. So, as I mentioned, the free energy is the linear combination of this chemical potential and the composition. So, when you compare this value, this value should be to equal equivalent to the chemical potential of A. So let's arrange for A, then you can get this relationship. And finally, you can get this one. So what does this relationship tell you? When omega is positive, activity of A should be larger than its mole fraction. So activity coefficient should be, will be larger than one. So what, is, what was the meaning of positive omega? Bonding between A B atom is weaker than average value of A A and B B. So A atom prefer the, the same A atom as its neighbor. So exactly matches what I mentioned. On the contrary, when the omega value is negative, which means that AB bond is much stronger than the activity coefficient will be less than one. Okay. Finally, I would like briefly uh, say about the uh, free energy change when we consider the impurity. Impurity means the very small amount of uh, dissimilar atom in a very large amount of, for example, when we put very small amount of B atom in very large amount of A atom. What will be the free energy change at that? You can remember
even in positive, very large positive contribution from the entropy, people usually draw at first downward and then upward, upward and then downward, so-called omega shape. Why the free energy curve will just go upward like this? Why, why free energy curve does not have a shape in a world, simple world shape? What is the meaning of this downward shape very near of its composition axis? It's dilute solution. In other words, impurity. When we put very small amount of the similar atom in large amount of the pure substance, it always stable. Right? When we put very small amount of A atom in pure B, then the friendly change is always negative. So thermodynamically, it is impossible to obtain pure, 100% pure substance. Right? So, why does it occur? Just think about using the regular solution model. When you consider the regular solution model, the free energy of mixing is given by B. Then let's consider first the derivative of the free energy of mixing with respect to any composition. Like the first this will be when we <coughs> consider the derivative of x a with respect to x b is simply have minus sign x a minus. Right? Is it correct? Question? For the derive, derive this one, you have to remember one. And from this one, B or partial X A will be minus one. Okay. So then let's think about when we put very small amount of B atom on A. When we put very small amount of B atom, this will be go to If XB, uh, for example, equal one, then the, you put a small amount of A atom. This will be equal to 
minus omega, right? How about this one? This will be go to infinite because when xb goes to 1, xa goes to 0, right? So when you consider the character of the lower division, then you can easily understand this go to minus uh, infinite. So you can easily understand that the contribution from the enthalpy has finite value, but the contribution from the entropy has infinite value at the end of two axes, right? So that's why even with a very large contribution from the entropy, we have to draw the free energy mixing at downward direction at the start of each axis. Then it will go like this. Always has W shape. Just think about that. This is XB is 1, and it means that this axis. Mm -hmm. So in this axis, the free energy curve, the, the slope of the free energy curve goes to plus, plus infinite goes to. Just, just think about this, this axis. When we consider this axis, it's negative infinite. When xp equal goes to 1, something wrong? This, when in 1, this will go to 0. This will go to minus infinite. Then with minus sign, it will go to plus infinite, right? Something wrong? Anything wrong? Let me know. So the thing is that this tangent should close to positive infinite as we as the ball fraction of B is close to one. And the reverse when the ball fraction of B close to zero. Okay? So that's that's why that that is the reason why we cannot make the 100% pure substance. <coughs> that is the <coughs> thermodynamic reason. Okay?
Okay, so far we have handled the equilibrium in two component system, but just consider one pace, one single pace. So every <coughs> point on free energy curve represents the free energy of that system in the equilibrium state. So you have to remember in single page system, even with two component, the equilibrium state located on the free energy curve. Then now it's time to consider heterogeneous system, which means that with two component or three component, the phase is more than one. So here is very familiar system, ion carbon, the base system of ferrous alloy, and it in very high temperatures, of course below the solidification temperatures, there's only one phase, which is called austenite, right? So let's decrease the temperature. So as we decrease the temperatures, Another phase will form, right? So let's say that is the ferrite, alpha. So it means that in high temperatures, the free energy of alpha is somewhere over the free energy of gamma, but it in every composition range of interest, the free energy of alpha is higher than the free energy of gamma. So we do not need to think about the existence of alpha. But when we slightly decrease, gradually decrease the temperatures, it does not. the free energy of alpha is star two. Go down and eventually two French curve is looks like this. So in this condition, what is the way to minimize of free energy of this heterogeneous system. Let's see. At first, the free energy of the system is located here, which means that the system is system consists of one single phase of austenite. But when we suddenly decrease the temperature to T1, at this temperature, the free energy of two phase is given by this one. Then what is the best way to minimize the free energy of the system? I think that you already know the answer. As the answer is constructing the tan tangent line, common tangent line, and find this position. And this position will give you the minimum free energy of the system consisting of alpha and ferrite and austenite. Sorry? Between alpha and theta appear, we have another phase that means the energy at that point is lower than the At this moment, just think about two phase. Mm -hmm. Do not go far away. Just think about two phase. 
the, the best way to minimize the free energy of the system is given by this one. Okay? Are you agree with it? All of you? Then, here is my question. In considering two-phase mixture, why we not consider the number of configuration? Number of configuration. Simply, when we consider the mixture of two atom, we think about the number of configuration to evaluate the free energy of mixing, right? Then, why we do not consider of the way of number of mixing when you consider the mixture of two phase? Sorry. Same atom. And that is the homework until next class. Are you clear what I mean? When you consider the mixture of two atoms, two atomic species, we consider, usually consider the, the contribution to the free energy by number of configuration of mixing, right? That is the concept, the free energy of mixing which is contribute from the enthalpy and contribute from the entropy. Then, why we do not consider those kind of things in considering the free energy of two, two phase? We just think that we consider when this phase and this phase and then Automatically, we think that the free energy of the mixture is given by this point. Are you clear what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So, that is the question, and I hope to uh, receive your opinion in next class. All of you. Okay? Next Tuesday. But I think that might not require, might not require that long time. Just think about it and uh, I hope to get your opinion. Okay, you don't have to submit, so I will ask randomly in next class. Is it okay? So, so think about the distance from this point to this point. When you accept this point is the minimum free energy of the system, which is a mixture of two phase, then the meaning of this distance will be the driving force at temperature T from one mole of austenite to transform to make sure of 
ferrite and austenite, which is equilibrium state at temperature T. Okay, that is that will be the driving force. The overall driving force. Any question? So to understand how the equilibrium state is reaches when we put alpha and beta uh, here is beta beta together which is not in equilibrium composition let's see that start this blue line when we put two how can I say two composition power with this upper one and beta one at first state. And the temperature, the, let's see the free energy of alpha and gamma is given by this one. Then what happened? You can see this tangent line, these two tangent line will give you the chemical potential of A and B atom in alpha and beta. So let's see the chemical potential in of A in alpha here. The chemical potential A in beta is given by here, right? Then what happened? The atom want to reduce its chemical potential. So the atom in alpha phase will move to beta. The same thing happened for B atom in beta phase. As you can see, the chemical potential of B atom in beta phase is higher than that in alpha phase. So B atom will move, will leave beta and go into the alpha. This process definitely changes the composition of alpha and beta. So the composition of alpha will gradually, gradually move this direction. And the composition of beta will move along this direction until the chemical potential of A and B. Chemical potential A in alpha and beta, and B, alpha and ta, reach to equivalent value. Okay? That is the physical meaning of the constructing tangent line to obtain the equilibrium state. You have to remember again, when you consider the equilibrium in heterogeneous phase, which is consists of different phase, at equilibrium, the chemical potential of element in different phase should be the same, not the, its composition. So when we put alpha and beta together at temperature T, which is given by this one, then when we consider the composition of the carbon, 
to where? You buy this one. So there is very sharp discontinuity at the interface. But there is no net flux of carbon even with this sharp concentration gradient. It tells you that the origin of the diffusion is the the diffusion is driven by the difference in chemical potential, not the composition. So people used to think that if there is a, some concentration gradient, then automatically the atom will flow from a high concentration region to low concentration region. But usually it may be right, but not precise, precise, accurate consideration. When you consider the diffusion, you have to consider the gradient in chemical potential, not gradient of the composition. That's why this sharp interface can be maintained. Okay? Okay, I, will, I would like to stop here and see you in this Thursday.